Hello everyone, this is Keith from the Solo Gamers Club and welcome to the channel. This video will be a little different from my other videos. Recently I received a large order of new games and I thought it might be interesting to share those games with the viewers as a sort of coming attractions, if you will. I'm going to film this in 4K. I've had my camera for two years and I've yet to film using that resolution so I thought this might be a good opportunity to try it out and see how it looks. This is not going to be an unboxing per se, but I'll show you the components of each game as I talk about the game and some general thoughts about solo gaming and why I enjoy it. So let's get started. First up is a game called Horrified. It's from 2019. It was designed by Prospero Hall, published by Ravensburger. It's for one to five players with a 60 minute playing time and ages 10 and above. In Horrified, we'll take on the role of an investigator who has come to a village overrun by the classic and iconic Universal Pictures monsters from the 1930s through the 1950s. This genre became known as Universal Horror and was largely shaped by the son of the studio's owner, Carl Lamell Jr. Dracula, Frankenstein and His Bride, The Mummy, The Wolfman, The Creature of the Black Lagoon, and The Invisible Man can all make an appearance, and each of them offers the player with a unique challenge to defeat them. The game's components are of excellent quality, and the board and cards are beautifully illustrated. The game looks to be well suited for solitaire play and should offer an uncomplicated and comfortable gaming experience. Next up is a game called Jeff Davis, The Confederacy at War from 2019. The game was designed by Ben Madison published by White Dog Games. It's a solo game, and the playing time is somewhere between 60 and 240 minutes, and it's geared for ages 12 and above. In Jeff Davis, The Confederacy at War, we get to refight the American Civil War, which raged across the United States from 1861 to 1865. In this solo-only game, the designer has allowed us to approach the conflict from a unique angle, as the player will be stepping into the shoes of the Confederacy's leader, Jefferson Davis. In the game, we'll control the Southern War effort by assigning generals to six different theaters, as well as trying to keep the fragile Confederate economy afloat as it tries to supply badly needed war materials to the various theaters. All of the aspects of the war are represented in the game, including the era's iconic generals, the North's attempt to strangle the Southern economy with the Anaconda Plan, and even special campaigns, such as those that occurred in New Mexico, Oklahoma Territory, and the infamous cavalry raids of Colonel George Kirk and Brigadier General John Hunt Morgan. The naval war has not been neglected, as ironclads, frigates, and blockade runners seek to control the rivers and oceans that border the Confederacy. Even the South's experimental submarine, the Hunley, may make an appearance. As in all games from Ben Madison, the player is quickly transported back to the era as the game's theme and immersive qualities shine through with an exciting chit pull mechanic and interesting calendar events. Game number three is Buffy the Vampire Slayer from 2016. The game was designed by Josh Dirksen and Thomas M. Gofton. Published by Jasco Games, it's a game for one to six players with a playing time of 40 to 60 minutes and it's set for an age of 13 and above. In this game, the player takes on the role of Buffy and the members of her Scooby gang as they try to defeat the Big Bad and three Monsters of the Week. The game includes quality components and features beautiful illustrations and a wonderful map of the city of Sunnydale. The game looks like it will scratch the itch of any Buffy fan as it includes all the elements that we've come to love about the show, 
like cool characters, cool items, and powerful artifacts. The rules include an appendix and definition page along with an example of play. Number four is another offering from Ben Madison and it's called Mrs. Thatcher's War, The Falklands 1982. It was released in 2017. The game is designed by Ben Madison, published by White Dog Games. It's a solo game with a playing time of 100 to 250 minutes and it's set for ages 12 and above. In Mrs. Thatcher's War, we step into the role of Rear Admiral Sandy Woodward as we lead a force of British ground, air, and naval forces 8,000 miles across the Atlantic to liberate the Falkland Islands from an Argentinian occupation force. The designer has modeled the conflict well as he presents the player with the same tough and gritty choices that plague the British commanders during the conflict. The player constantly feels the mounting pressure of the ticking clock as the unpredictable weather of the South Atlantic looms large, seeking to stymie the British effort at any moment. This strategic level game includes all the aspects of the conflict from exciting air battles for air superiority over the East Falklands to the cat and mouse efforts to find and destroy enemy surface ships. Ground War includes the historic British and Argentinian formations and is demonstrated with simple but effective mechanics, simulating the difficulties of slogging across a landscape of peat bogs and craggy mountains as the British forces attempt to retake the capital city of Stanley and force an Argentinian surrender. Game number five on our list is Global War, World War II Worldwide, 1939 to 1945. It was released in 2023. The game was designed by Ben Madison and Wes Ernie, published by White Dog Games. It's a solo game with a playing time of 45 to 180 minutes, and it's geared for ages 12 and above. In Global War, the player steps into the shoes of the big three, Churchill, Stalin, and Roosevelt, as they attempt to push back the forces of the Axis and win the Second World War. The game includes all the elements of the conflict, all inside a manageable footprint, which allows the players to refight the entire war in about three to four hours. The game covers the dominant parts of the conflict, including the Battle of the Atlantic, the Battle of Britain, and the great carrier battles of the Pacific. The designers have included a great deal of immersive elements into the game, including historic military and political events that are sure to keep the players on their toes. All the pieces of the conflict are present, including U-boats, tanks, aircraft carriers, historic leaders and personalities, and even the atomic bomb. The game offers an exciting chit pull mechanic that keeps the game fresh and intriguing each time it's played. Game number six is Kaiser Krieg, released in 2022. The game was designed by Ben Madison, published by White Dog Games, it's a solo game with a playing time of 60 to 120 minutes and a recommended age of 14 and above. In Kaiserkrieg, we travel back to the start of the Great War, where we take on the role of Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany as we direct the forces of the Central Powers against the Triple Entente. The game includes a unique States of Siege style system that models the feel of a war of attrition as the enemy forces are not advancing along a track, as with most SOS-style games, but the enemy forces are right on your doorstep, just waiting to come over the top and pour into the lands of the Reich and its allies. To win, the Central Powers must battle against the ever-increasing efforts of the Royal Navy's blockade, while it attempts to deliver a knockout blow to France, Italy, and Russia. If the Central Powers can prevent defeat, the 
game will end in November of 1918 with a victory for Germany, Austro-Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottomans. All the major theaters of the war are represented, including the steamy jungles of the East African Campaign and the burning deserts of the Near East. Although the game focuses on the ground war, naval and air war are not forgotten, as U-boats, Zeppelins, German and British bombers, even the infamous Red Baron, Manfred von Richthofen, might make an appearance in his red-colored triplane over the skies of the Western Front. Well, before I introduce the final game in my set, I'd just like to step on my soapbox for a moment and just have a few thoughts about solitaire gaming and about some of the games that I've uh, purchased. First off, I'll start with a request, and it's unlikely that Ben Madison will ever see this video as this is only a small channel. But if he does, I would like to encourage him to apply the mechanisms that he's designed in these other fine games and apply them to two themes that I think would make great thematic and immersive games. My first suggestion would be a game about the Sengoku period, Japan's Age of War set during the 15th and 16th centuries. The game might include potent diamos vying for control of Japan with samurai, ronin, and even ninja assassins. My second suggestion to him would be a Cold War game it simulates the struggle of East versus West with conventional forces, spies, technological investment, ICBMs, SLBMs, ABMs, along with strategic bombers and interceptors. The game could be centered in the 1950s through the 1970s and feature some of the historic milestones of the period, such as the Cuban Missile Crisis and all the proxy wars of Korea, Vietnam, and South America, with each possibly setting off a thermonuclear exchange. The game might include separate victory conditions, one for a non-nuclear release, and another if an atomic exchange occurs. Just some thoughts. Well, next I'd just like to expound the fun that I have in solo gaming. Uh, it offers me the ability to play the games whenever I want to without having to worry about you know, trying to coordinate people's schedules and things, and I think that's probably one of the main reasons why I enjoy solo gaming so much. I can set up the game, get up a, a nice hot cup of coffee or tea, and just sit with the game for a few hours and contemplate my moves. And I think that's one of the most redeeming features to me of the solo gaming experience. And there's so many fine games out now. In the old days, back in the 70s and 80s, and 90s, there really wasn't any dedicated solo games. You had to play the games wearing two hats. And um, although that was fun, these solo specific games that are being designed now by people like Ben Madison and others uh, really crank it up a few notches for the solo gamer. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about uh, trying to be a fair uh, playing both sides. The game is your opponent and I really enjoy those aspects of solo game. All right enough of the soapbox and now we'll jump into our seventh and final game and this is another one from Ben Madison and Wes Ernie. This is Death in the Trenches The Great War 1914 to 1918. It's the second edition which was released in 2022. Game was designed by Ben Madison and Wes Ernie and published by Compass Games game is designed for two players but can be easily played solitaire. The playing time on this is about 300 minutes and the age grouping would be 12 and above. Death in the Trenches is another offering from the team of Ben Madison and Wes Ernie that revisits the Great War in a much more detailed fashion than the previous title. It contains the vast elements of this epic global conflict including the European continent, African theaters, and the war in the Far East over the German possessions of Tsing Tao and Micronesia. The game centers upon the WESCOM system that was developed by Wes Ernie. 
From what I've read, it seems like it will accurately model the feel of warfare during this period, as its dreaded overroll mechanic can spell disaster for an overly aggressive player. Although the game centers on the ground war, rules for naval combat and amphibious assault are skillfully represented with a unique sea control system that accounts for naval supremacy within five strategic sea regions. The game includes the chrome elements that we've come to expect from a Ben Madison design, where he includes features like historic unit formations, reserves, air supremacy, poison gas, fortifications, colonial warfare, the Boer Revolt, and even communist partisans following the Russian Revolution. The game comes with a 20-page events book that features an array of interesting historical random events that are sure to test every player's mettle. Although the game is not designed for solitaire play specifically, it seems that it will lend itself well to solitaire play as it contains little or no hidden information. Well, that about wraps up this video. This won't be something that I'm likely to have on the channel too often, but I just wanted to try something a little different as I don't want to become a one-trick pony. I hope this video was informative for you and that it might spark your interest in acquiring these quality solo gaming selections. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and have a pleasant evening. Good night everyone.